So one of the hardest parts or one of the parts that most people miss when they're learning AI automation is actually just around the planning of a workflow. Now, it may sound obvious, but planning is actually what's going to make or break your workflows. So today, we're going to cover how to effectively take a larger problem and break that down into smaller problems on a workflow so you can take all of your business problems or your client business problems and break them down in the same format. It's going to be super quick and easy, very informal. So we're going to go on to create workflow and attached in the course, we're going to have a JSON file and you're going to load up the JSON file. So you're going to download the JSON file and it just ends in .json. And what you're going to do is go into a new workflow and you're going to import from file. You're going to go to your downloads and it's going to say something like day four planning workflows. And you're just going to open that file. And it's a very simple file. It just has a few notes in here, which we'll go over. And today we're going to do this step by step. You follow along as well, exactly breaking down and planning a workflow with me. And we're going to name this something the same like day four planning workflows just something nice and simple that we can remember. So we've got these sticky notes in here and we've seen sticky notes and they've got some images and the images are actually taken directly from the school community. So school.com forward slash scrapes. If you want to check that out, feel free to check that out. We've got all sorts of additional resources in here, all of the templates, etc. as well. So inside this community, we have all of our members, over 500 members, that are discussing various different things. So when they have a problem, for example, they are asking in the questions for those problems. So you can see uh, if I filter by questions here, for some reason the filter's not working, but you can see down in the community, we've got all of these different posts from people. So I've taken a few of those posts based on workflow ideas that people are building out. And we're going to build out some examples or one example of how I'd break down that problem into manageable steps. So we've got examples here. We've got Andrew who wants to build a LinkedIn scraper. So have you any ideas how to pull information off LinkedIn? I'm looking for direct emails for rotating engineers as an example. I'm curious to see what it actually pulls off for LinkedIn. So Andrew is basically looking for a LinkedIn scraper. So we could break that down and work out how to actually build that out. And we'll talk about the steps that we follow here. We've then got another workflow that's more comprehensive that was put into the community by Avi, and it's a doc sender and follow-up. So for an accountant or a lawyer, he wanted to build an app with NAN that reads a list of clients from Airtable, reads a list of document types like tax documents, medical documents, etc., and then choose for each customer which document types are required and therefore needed and then send that message to the customer based on what they needed. Once the customer uploads and saves it into Airtable, we then check which documents are required and then send any reminders to customers about any documents that they haven't filled out. So this is slightly more complex, but we would break this down into multiple workflows. We then got Pavel about autom automating YouTube comments and saving them to Airtable. So a simple function that Pavel needs to basically go onto YouTube grab comments from a given video and save them to a database like Google Sheets or Airtable. And then finally, I've got another example from uh, Teeb here, which is a CV parser. I'm creating a CV parser so that CVs can be read and then automatically entered into our CRM. However, I'm now encountering a problem that when somebody pastes a picture of their CV, it doesn't work, basically. So he needs a CV parser that's going to import both documents and images and read the content from that as well. So we've got all of these different workflows that people are building inside the community. Now, what are the actual steps to breaking down and planning a workflow? I've kind of broken it down into four different things here. Start with the end goal. What problem exactly are you solving? So we had the four examples of the different problems being solved there. And then we would go step by step and break those down into simple steps. We'd work out what the triggers were. So we've already talked a lot about triggers. We'd work out what the data sources were, and we'd work out where we are moving that data and in what format we are moving that data. It's as simple as that. We have inputs, we have a data transformation, and then we have outputs. And we just break down every single step. At the high level, 
and then we start building our automations. So what we do is we create workflow diagrams before we start building. So let's use Teeb's CV parser as an example here. We basically need to map out what the inputs are, what needs to happen in the middle, the data transformation, and what output he needs. So he said he's got a CRM here, and he said the input is effectively either an image or a PDF or a file type receiving a CV. So we've got a CV input, and we want to get information as text into an output. So the first thing I do when planning out this workflow is actually grab a sticky note. So you can either add the sticky note using tab, sorry, shift S, and you add a sticky note like that, or you can actually come up here and click the sticky note and it's gonna appear where you last clicked on the canvas. So if I click up here, it's gonna appear uh, slightly higher up there as well. So what we're doing is we're basically mapping out with sticky notes this process. And you can change the color here. I conventionally use white for workflows, I tend to use purple for additional information, but it's entirely up to you what format you follow. It's nice to follow a consistent format though. Now, just quickly on these sticky notes, to enter into them, they're basically written in markdown format. So if I double click into this, you can see if I make it bigger, oops, that we've got a header here, which is notated by a double hash. And if I wanted to make that smaller, I put a triple hash. And if I wanted to make it even bigger, I put a single hash, and this is just markdown format, something you can look up elsewhere. The stars will give us bold text. The uh, square will square brackets round a word will give us a link, and then the link is followed in here. So you can see that this guide will actually be a working link. So it's just how you choose to write your notes yourself. I would just write something like CV input. So we are breaking down our inputs and our outputs, and then I'd say something like receives files, that contain CVs, either as image or text file. So something like a PDF where we can actually extract the text. So we have some sort of CV input, and then our eventual output is gonna be upload to CRM. And this might seem quite basic right now, right? You're like, oh, well, obviously we've got a CV input and we're uploading to CRM, but what we're actually doing is thinking through from start to finish exactly what would happen. And then we're building out steps that we would potentially put mock nodes into. So when we actually come to build it or build the first version of it, we can work out what's important, what's not important, what things need to change, et cetera. But laying it out from end to end is really important and will speed up your workflow building, save you a lot of time. So we have a CV input, so we're receiving that CV either as an image or a text file. And then eventually we're going to upload to a CRM. So in between that, we know that he's had trouble previously with images or text files. So we probably can map it out a little bit like this, where we have the image, or sorry, let's do text file up here, e.g. PDF. And then we have something like an image file down here, e.g. PNG. So we know from seeing the 8020 that we're basically going to have a condition check here. So from the input, we need to work out whether it's in the PDF format or in the PNG format. So we'd probably have another step in the middle here that's just asked the question, what format is it in? And you can see how we start to break this down. And we're literally breaking out every single step so that we understand there might be a node at each step. So which format, PDF or image? And that might be a conditional node that says, if this, then take this route. If an image, take this route. Now, if we have multiple inputs into our CRM here, we could either have two CRM files here, two CRM nodes, or we might need to merge the data together and standardize it. So there might be some sort of merge or standardization, but for now, we'll just put the sticky note, which is effectively standardized data and if i just and then what we have is almost a full flow plan here it's as simple as that it took not so long at all so we have a cv input we're detecting which format it is based on the formatting we're either processing it straight away as a text file or we are basically taking the image file and getting that into text aren't we so you can't actually process an image what you'd actually do is turn into text 
because ultimately we need it in text at the end so that we can standardize that data and upload it to our CRM. So then I'd start thinking about, okay, what nodes would I need for this? So let's start with the CRM. Let's assume we're using something like HubSpot. And again, we don't need to be specific with the different actions we take here, but basically we are adding a contact probably, create or update a contact. And we can come out there and we can just drag that across here, delete the connection between the nodes. Let's just put this manual trigger across here at the moment. But basically we know we're gonna update contact information Let's start with just email in here, but we could add any property like city, date of birth, etc., which will be here in this step of standardizing data. So to standardize the data, we'd probably use the edit fields node. And this node basically just says, take an input and make a transformation on it. So the reason I know how to use this is experience, but you'll use the edit fields node a lot. And what we're going to be saying is actually take the text like person's name, person's email, person's city, and from each entry point, so we're going to have it from the text files like a PDF, or from this image file, which will turn into text, from each entry point, just standardize that data that says, okay, receive that data and standardize it so it's easy to pass into our CRM here. So nice and simple, we're just mapping out simple workflows. Let's go back to the start where we have the CV input. So let's assume in this case that we perhaps have a file upload and we could do that through something like an NAN form where we allow people to upload a file directly or we might have it, maybe the file is being pushed into us through a webhook. Maybe the file is already in a Google Drive and we're downloading the file. So we could have any sort of trigger here and as you know, we can have multiple triggers. So we could have download a file from Google Drive. So we would trigger when a file is added and then we would add a node that says Google Drive download file, for example. And we're not gonna fill out any of the node conditions at this point, it's not the point. The point is planning at a high level what it might look like. So both of these triggers can be perfectly valid, run at the same time. We then need to determine which format is something in. So we would probably either use an if node or a switch node, and both of those would be valid here, but because we've got two options, an if would work well. So if already text, we're gonna take the true branch and do the text. If not text, and if it's an image, then we're gonna do something else with it. If it is text, then what we're gonna do is probably just a transformation with a file. So if I go into the data transformation, we actually have this extract from file here where it says convert binary data to JSON. So convert binary, which is a file, to any sort of format. So we could probably say something like extract from PDF, and that will output it as text. So if we have a PDF input that's passed into here, we're going to extract that into text. And then we're going to take and map those data points to here. So we're going to say the text that is in here will say X, Y, Z, and you need to map it into name, city, email address. Or if we've got a variable input format, this is where we start. This is why it's important planning. Actually, we might have an AI node, like an LLM chain, where we have this middle point and a new step, which says, based on the variable input, because CVs are going to be totally variable here, we're going to say, get info, e.g. name, city, email. And all we're going to do, we'd connect this obviously to a model, but we're saying actually based on the input, take in this text information and grab the name, city, and email and put that in your output so that we can standardize the data, name, email, city here. I hope this is making sense so far, but we're just planning out a rough what the workflow would look like. Now, the final part is like, okay, we can ex accept it in an image format then instead so if it is an image file, we need to turn that into text somehow. And the way we would do that, and I know this from experience, and you can use a community and ask questions like this, we'd use an OCR model. So OCR is optical character recognition. We pass in an image, it scans the image, and it says, okay, this is the text I see on the image. Here's your output. So it's effectively doing the same as this is here, converting a PDF to text. But what we're doing instead is sending it to an external service. I know Mistral's a really good and cheap one, $1 per thousand pages. And what we're doing is basically extracting text. So we're just using a different node. We're saying if it's an image, send the image to something like Mistral or an optical character rec recognition service, 
extract the text, and then pass it in as the input to the basic LLM chain, which is going to do exactly the same. It receives text. It's got a bunch of text. It's going to try and determine from there the name, the city, the email. We'd standardize that data so it's all in one format because they might have two different formats here, especially as they're coming in as CVs, and then we're going to upload it to our CRM. So as simple as that, we've broken down a two-line or three-line description into a workflow. And you can do this with absolutely any workflow, and I guarantee this will save you time, 